Well, Emiratisation, the employment of Emiratis, is among the top priorities for the UAE government. Earlier this year, the UAE cabinet announced a comprehensive plan to boost Emiratisation in the private sector. Now, companies are already required to increase the number of UAE citizens in their workforce, which would help create about 75,000 jobs uh, by 2026. And Niels, it's a great initiative to get you know more Emiratis in, in the workforce working. No, it's just right, you know. I mean, uh, and and also talks about inclusivity. If you see, there are every single organization here in the UAE. You'll see people from different countries, different cultures coming in mm-hmm. and working together. And and uh, you know, from from an emiratization point of view, why not? I mean, it's. After all, the United Arab Emirates. Correct. Well, mandatory emiratization in the UAE could cause some big fines uh, to businesses. Starting next year, non-compliant companies will have to pay thousands of dirhams in fines for every Emirati who has not been hired. To get more details about this, Rowena Agabayo is the group manager of RAS Corporate Advisors and she's joining us via Zoom. Rowena, thank you for joining us on Talk 100.3. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. No, thank you. What is the latest yes. emiratization target? Okay. The I mean, let's let's good some put some good overview before we, we actually go to the numbers and figures. Um this actually is very good a project of the Emirates. After all, this is their country. Emiratization basically employing the Emiratis and putting them into the picture of the workforce. And this basically was put up for the purpose of increasing and providing job opportunities available for Emirati, similarly to um, expatriates like, like us. So it's inclusivity and diversity and including the Emiratis into the workforce. So to add on, um, there is a deadline, you're right, it's going to be on January 1, 2023, and it's a priority, so they're boosting this, and they are coming up with a comprehensive plan to boost this emiratization program. It is mandatory, so it targets basically commercial companies, so we're talking about the private sector in this aspect. Mm-hmm. So there is a um, 2% um requirement for private companies okay and the target is to to gather basically at least target 75,000 jobs once we reach 2026. Um, it's it's I think important to add that for pri- private companies it's two percent but for banks it's a different percentage okay. that's four percent and for insurance companies it's five percent so it's gonna be progressive as the years go by because the target is per year it's two percent so it's gonna add up so two percent for this year next year will be two percent the following year will be two percent so targeting for private companies we're looking at ten percent increase or not increase but emiratis as a total number of employees by 2026 so that's basically the target so we have a deadline it's a priority it is mandatory and there's going to be incentives for for private companies who are going to be um, strictly following this um, imposed uh, rule or responsibility on them. There will be a, there will be an eight percent eighty rather sorry for that eighty percent to be clear incentives for any service fee uh, uh, they do with uh, more or transactions they do with the Ministry of human resources and emiratization. So this basically handles all employees in the UAE. So So they'll be getting that as an incentive. Given that the cap uh, for a company is 50 or more employees, I I was realistically going to see a lot of private companies just keep their head count Uh somewhere in the mid-40s? It it should be. It should be like they should be technically monitoring this because the the loss says or states rather that it should be 50 companies above so for those lower than that then if they're going to continue i mean if they're growing we 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 have to look at that aspect that if the company is growing they have to monitor that if it's going above 50 then they'll have to comply now are they are they 50 employees that are on staff that have got their visa i mean are we going to see companies get around this by just having more freelancers that come in that therefore don't include in that 50 (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is number of employees to so headcount, regardless of what type of employee this will be. Oh, so even so if, we're if, talking, you have, if you have 50 freelancers, um, yeah. it, it, that, that, yeah. you're then going to be targeted. Okay. 
Yes, yes, definitely because you're still an employee of the company, okay? Technically, your labor card will be under the company even if you own your own, if you have your own visa. So this has to be clear from the very beginning that technically you're still a, an employee of the company. No, but then I mean if you are a consultant, you may or may not have the labor card with the company, right? Okay, we're talking technically about those under the company labor card. Right, so fair. that's where they're going to start counting. Yeah. Fair. Effectively, that, that that's the head count. That, yeah. that makes sense. So you, you said there is a certain percentage, 2% to start off with. So yes. for every organization that has approximately, say, 50, uh, 50 plus, so if it's 50 yeah. people working for them, out of the 50, one mm-hmm. has to be an Emirati. Is, is okay. that yes. the right? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Right. So Perfectly uh, said. Yeah. But... But tell me something, I mean, and, and we know this, uh, you know, that uh, while we are also looking at inclusivity and, you know, with the diversification of the talent pool that we already have, uh, mm-hmm. is, isn't it an amazing time to see that, you know, talents from uh, the land itself, from UAE itself, joining forces in private sector? We've seen most of the Emiratis prefer working in government yes. sectors. They're getting into private sector. How has that, uh, you know, been from, from a mindset point of view? Uh, this is amazing project. See, because we were all brought up differently as nationality wise, values wise, how we work are very different. Mm-hmm. And exposures of Emiratis will give us better understanding of the culture. Right. And I think this is an additional asset also to the company for every company employing an Emirati because their involvement and um, it's it's forward looking project. Mm-hmm. And I believe their contribution will be very good and beneficial to each and every company employee in Emirati. When it comes down to uh, the fines uh, th- th- that happens like oh. this, yeah, I mean, I mean, is there going to be a grace period at all for businesses or is it, is it really just uh, January 2023, it's got to change? Ah, uh, it has to be January 2023 um, because if you if you like in the past years, if they have started actually with this Emiratization project since 2006, mm-hmm. so that's like a um, long time ago if you look back. And um, if they will not be very strict in imposing it, they will not achieve the target in 2026. So I think this is a serious business. Every company should consider this if you have beyond 50 number of employees, because it's going to be implemented 2023 for sure. Is there a minimum payment that you need to pay an Emirati worker? Um, that will depend per company because um, not all companies will be I mean, perfectly um, as pro- we we're looking at profit uh, sure. point of view, Dif- different companies will have different. Um, it will depend on the offer, so okay. I couldn't specifically say how much because it it will depend also on what type of service each company provides. So whether they're into hotels, whether they're into trading, so it depends. No, it, right. Yeah, it, but, per but, company we will have their own. No, no, I understand that whenever there's a mm. there's a new implementation of a law, there's there's, there's some teething problems as always. Um, but I'm thinking if yes. I've got a company and I've got 50 employees and I don't currently mm-hmm. have an Emirati worker, I need to have two percent my workforce uh, but if I then try mm-hmm. and um, make an offer and just say the offer is uh, 10,000 dirhams mm-hmm. a month to someone and no one accepts it um, is the law going to come down on me if I've yeah. made offers to people but no Emiratis have accepted the jobs oh that's a that's a good question uh, actually but you you have to Proof. find a way yeah. to get an Emirati at the end of the day but see th- this is all about I think at the end of the day, it's between the the applicant or the 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 company in itself. I mean, they have to be very upfront from the very beginning, and at the same time, they have to meet halfway. Mm-hmm. I believe so. It's a requirement. They have to do something about it. But I mean, they have to to find ways to get it done. All right. Now, I mean, I'm sure that, uh, like, like Kitch mentioned a while back, that there could be teething issues, there could be challenges uh, once the rule yes. rule is employed. I'm sure that you know all of these things will get ironed out. But uh, it's it's amazing to know, you know, that there's something like this has come through, and uh, you know, we've we've always been a melting pot of cultures here in the UAE. This is just one more step to bring forward uh, the the field uh, of of uh, multicultural ethnicities coming in together here. Yes, yeah. yes, that's Th- true. Thank you very much. Ro- said. Rowena Agabayo, the group manager of the RAS Corporate Advisors. Thank you very much for joining us on Talk 100.3. Thank you for having me. Thank you Have very much. Nice-